Okay, uh, here we go. On Friday, you guys were supposed to watch a video regarding related rates. I have not yet graded your work, but I did scroll through it, and uh, it was not very good. So, um, ideally, we would watch another video. Corbin, yes. 3-9. Yeah. So, uh, ideally, we would do a second uh, bout of videos, but uh, that would just be too detrimental for your learning. So, as long as I administer the same, same, uh, how do you want to say it, the same treatment from here on out, we're okay. And and here's all it is. It's very simple, you guys. It's just uh, four boxes. And this is actually how your book actually suggests to do it as well. And we start by modeling the problem. So. Uh, this problem says the volume of the soccer ball is increasing at a rate of 6 centimeters per second. At what rate is the diameter increasing when the volume is 180 centimeters cubed? Okay, so I just want to get a visual of what's happening. I have a sphere, hard to draw a sphere, but at least I know it's getting bigger. I know that that's what's happening. Do you know the current radius? No. Uh, if you had to, could you find out the current radius? Yeah, since you know what the volume is, since you know what the current volume is, you could figure out the current radius if you have to. Could you figure out the current diameter if you had to? Yeah. Okay. Now I need a formula. Okay. So here's where we model. Here's where we write our formulas. Sometimes I write my different relationships that exist. Sometimes I write variables, but I I put all these things over here. This is kind of my my knowns and unknowns spot. And you guys will get better at these, but a lot of it has to do with problem recognition, that you would see it and you'd be like, okay, I recognize all this problem set up. I remember where it is. But if you haven't seen this problem in a while, you know, they can be difficult, and uh, we need to be able to work through them. So we've got uh, what formula uh, do we need to use for volume of a soccer ball? Anybody know a sphere? Volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi r to the third. That's the volume of a sphere. That's okay if you don't know it. It's in the front of your book. And even better yet, if you don't know them, uh, if you don't have a way to get to them in your book, I would just start making a list on a sheet of notes somewhere where you make a list of all those things. I'll provide that information for you on the test. I'm not going to I'm not gonna leave that off, but as far as how do you get it in the meantime, start making a list. Um, you know, area of a square, I'm area of a square, obviously you got base times height, triangle, one half base times height, all that stuff. Now, here's the problem, everybody. Uh, in this section right here, I make a plan, and in this box over here, I actually solve it. Now, it says the volume of a soccer ball is increasing at that rate. So that means that this is a derivative. Yes, no? However, what is changing in this problem? There's a number of things changing. What's changing in this problem? Diameter is changing. What else? The volume is changing. What else? The radius, the surface area, and most importantly, time is changing. And because time is changing, that drives everything. This is, again, cubic centimeters per second. So when I take a derivative, you ask with what variable are you taking it with respect to, and that would be in respect to time. Now, we are wondering the derivative of the diameter. This is very important that you recognize this right now. At what rate is the diameter increasing? We are trying to solve for d prime. I'm just going to write that down. D prime equals what? Do you have a D in your current equation? No. So what do we need to do? Substitute something in. Is there a relationship that exists among R and D? 2R equals D or R equals one half of D. 
if I plug that in for R, will I now have an equation that has D in it as opposed to R? And then when I take the derivative, I will end up with a D prime. So I'm just going to write this out. Volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi 1 half D to the third. So, I now need to make a plan. I have my information. I have my equation. I'm looking to solve for D prime. How will I obtain a D prime? What do I need to do? Take the derivative. So take the derivative with respect to T of V equals 4 over 3 pi times 1 over 2 D to the third power. You guys want to simplify that a little bit? Okay. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to T of V equals, what is 1 over 2 to the third power? 1 over 8. 1 over 8 times 4 over 3 would be 4 over 24 or 1 over 6. So it's pi over 6 times D to the third power. Once I simplify my fractions, I come up with uh, volume is equal to pi over 6 times d to the third power. I'm going to take the derivative of it. I haven't done that yet. What is the derivative of v with respect to t? Implicit differentiation v prime. What is the derivative? What? What's 1 over 2 to the third power? Yep. Okay. So I've got V prime, pi over 6, D to the third power. I need to take the derivative of that. What's this derivative? Good. 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. And then it reduces to D squared, and we attach a D prime. Let's fill in the blanks. We need to solve for D prime. What is V prime? Yeah, it tells me, not 180, it tells me the volume of a soccer ball is increasing at a rate. So this is my derivative of volume. It's increasing at a rate of 6 centimeters, uh, cubic centimeters per second. So I have 6 is equal to pi over 2 times, do we know the current diameter? No. How could we figure out the current diameter? Yeah, we we have this equation right here, you guys. We have volume is equal to pi over 6 d to the third. So let's plug in 180 right there. Equals pi over 6 d to the third. And that will give us our current diameter. So I'm, I'm doing a little backtrack work. Multiplied by the reciprocal, I get 6 times 180. We set it up like this, but no, we did not take any derivatives last year. 360 times 3. I think it's 1080. So let's, uh, let's work out our arithmetic here. I have, I, I think that that's right, 180 times 6, was that 1080? Yeah, okay, divided by pi, and then we're going to take that answer to the 0.33 power, which is the cube root, and I get 7, 7.01. Is that okay? Everybody sees how I got that. Okay, now, and, and you guys, however you want to handle the arithmetic here is up to you. I'm going to do it like this. This is just my choice. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal and get 12 pi. I'm sorry, 12 over pi. 
Uh, I multiply the top by 2, the bottom by pi. Multiply by reciprocal equals 7.01 squared times d prime. Now I divide both sides by 7.01 squared. I get 12 over pi times 7.01 quantity squared equals d prime. So that's what I'm going to plug into my calculator. Point zero seven eight. I need a label. Related rates. They are called related because they are all moving in accordance with time. So we take the derivative with respect to time. Is this that confusing of a graphic organizer? No, you divide up into four boxes, that's it. But you guys, if you remember last year, we did optimization problems, and you guys had much more success when you simply drew the four spots. Yep. Forget it. Okay, here we go. Number two. So if you get a sphere, if you get a circle, there you go, that's how you set it up. Here's a cone type problem. Problem recognition. Model, formulas, plan, solve. I have a cone. It's a paper cup. It says a paper cup, so it's a cup, so it's got to hold water. It has the shape of a cone with a height of 12, radius of 4 at the top. If water is poured into the cup at a rate of 2 cubic centimeters per second, how fast is the water level rising when the water is 5 centimeters deep? I will tell you guys right now that uh, I have not worked out these problems. I just made them up last night as I was putting stuff together for today. Uh, but they should work out fine. The first one sure did. So here we go. Uh, we know that this cone has a radius of 4 so and it has a height of 12 I modeled the problem I have water going in there so I guess if you wanted to draw water going in there at a rate of 2 cubic centimeters per second that'd be fine but I need a formula the formula should be for what volume of a cone and the volume of a cone is equal to 1 over 3 pi r squared times your height what are we trying to solve for in this problem the derivative of the We're trying to find how fast the water level is rising. What variable is that? Height. We're trying to find the derivative of the height. We would like to know h prime. Now, if I know that the current height is 5, could I figure out the radius if I had to? I could. But look at this right now. If you were to take the derivative of this, you have r squared times h. That requires the use of what rule? The product rule. So hold on, you guys. Hold on. Okay. So I, I laid this out in the video. Just watch. Okay. So you can see why we're going to do what we're going to do. If you were to take the derivative of this, you would take the derivative of this guy, which would be an r prime, correct? You'd have some kind of r prime times an h. And then you would take the derivative of that, which would be some kind of h prime times some r value over there. So you look, you have an r prime and an h prime, an h and an r. I can figure out, I can figure out what the current radius is. I can figure out what the current height is. It's 5. But I can't figure out the current rate of change of the radius. 
So if you go about this method, you will not arrive at the correct answer because you can't figure out r prime. So therefore, I have to get rid of a variable. Do we want this in terms of r or do we want it in terms of h? We want in terms of h because we're trying to find h prime. So I need to write a relationship, and the relationship is namely this. The height divided by the radius. What is the current height? 12. What is the current radius? 4. So what I want to do right now is I want to write a relationship that I know remains constant. The height and the radius will always be in proportion to one another. In other words, the height is always 3 times the radius. If you cross multiply, you can see they have 4h is equal to 12r. Do I want to solve for r or do I want to solve for h? I want to solve for r in terms of h. So I divide both sides by 12, and I get one-third h is equal to r. What can I now do with that? Right. Does that make sense? We are now going to eliminate our radius, our r variable, and we're just going to have h. Okay, what's our plan? What do we need to do? Take the derivative with respect to time. Yes, of the volume, which is equal to 1 over 3 times pi times 1 over 3 h quantity squared times h. Would you guys like to simplify this? Yes, I would agree you want to do so. If you didn't simplify this, you would have to use the chain rule with the product rule. So we definitely want to simplify this. So you're going to take the derivative with respect to time of the volume, which is equal to what is one third squared? One ninth times one third is one twenty seventh. So we get pi over twenty seven times h cubed. Yes? No? Now, let's actually solve it. What is the derivative of V? V prime. What is the derivative of pi over 27h to the third? Three pi over 27 is one over nine. Yes, or pi over nine. I have my h squared. I attach my h prime because I'm taking the derivative with respect to time. Do we know the current derivative? Do we know the derivative of the volume? Yes. Two. Volume is increasing at a rate of two. Equals pi over nine times. What is the current height? Five. I'm going to let you figure that out. Okay. Doesn't help when you don't listen to everything I say. 25 over 9. Multiply by reciprocal. 18 over 25 pi is equal to h prime, which is... We said 18 over 25 pi. What is my label? Go ahead. I wrote it in terms of pi. I think it's cleaner. If you want a decimal, go ahead. Either way is acceptable. For, no, no, no. We got two on the back. Forget whether or not it's difficult, you guys. Answer me this, okay? Does it make more sense now compared to how you saw it on Friday? 
And I, I, I know that I know the biggest difference is that we're going over it together in class. But the other piece is that you've seen it once. Do you see how each problem is very similar? You draw the shape, draw the shape, get a formula, take the derivative, solve. No. Current height is five. Then the current, so the water is currently right here. So that height is five. Because if you, I guess. I guess your key is you're, you're focusing on the water here, since the water's at 5. Then you know not to use 12. The 12 never changes, does it? No. The height does. So we the height of the water. So so that's what we want to use. Yes. Okay. Uh, Christy and I looked at this problem on Friday, and uh, this, this is a good problem. And uh, Chrissy can vouch for me that uh, I didn't know how to do this problem walking into it. Uh, we set it up identical to it, and uh, we we had one small flaw, but that's I, I partly blame the way the book wrote the problem, and so I've tried to clarify it in here for you as well. It says, a man is walking away from a lamppost that's 22 feet tall at a rate of 3 feet per second. The man is 6 feet tall. How fast is the tip of the shadow moving away from the man when the man is 15 feet away from the lamppost? And how fast is the tip of shadow moving away from the lamp post? Now, okay. Now, you guys, here's the deal. Again, I can't, I can't go over an example of every single type of problem that you're gonna get from the book. What I do instead is I give you guys choices for your assignment of what problems you want to do. Okay, so out of say 16 or 20 problems, you you can choose eight. You can choose eight. Now, here's the deal. Um, do you have the skills to do these type of problems? Yes, you do. Do you remember them well enough? Probably not. Okay. So as we move forward, you, you need to realize two pieces. Number one, that you have covered enough material in your geometry, pre-calculus, all that time to be able to do these type of problems. However, problem recognition is the key. And so, you know, this type of lamp post problem or the way we construct it, it's really when you see that type of structure that that should set off something in your brain where you're like, oh, yeah. For example, uh, anytime you get a circle or a sphere, think of this problem. Anytime you guys get a cone-type problem, think of this problem. Well, now we're going to get a similar triangles problem. Let's try this. Similar triangles problem. We model it. I have a man walking away from a lamp post. Here it is. There's my great lamp post. Here's the guy. The lamp post is 22 feet tall. He's walking away at a rate of three feet per second. I'm not going to write that down right now because it's hard to know exactly where to express that. But we'll say that this is the shadow. Yes, very good. Okay, so um, this right here is going to be his distance from the lamp post. I'm going to call this his distance from the lamp post. And I'm going to call this S the length of his shadow. What is his current height? Six. So this is an important relationship to recognize. 
Do you see that we have similar triangles? Why? Okay, all right, so Marlene sees uh, part of it. She said she said something that matters right here. I have this small triangle and I have the large triangle, right? They both share an angle. And then they both have a 90 degree angle. And if two angles are the same, does the third angle have to be the same? Yeah, so angle, angle, angle says that triangle, triangles are similar. And if triangles are similar, then their sides are in proportion to one another. So, I need to take, I'm going to write the height divided by the length, okay? So, the height of the lamppost is 22 divided by, what's the whole length of that large triangle? D plus S. Jalen, you ask a really good question. Num number one, you could say, well... Um, you could say no. You're not supposed to know how to do it yourself, and therefore you have to you have to look at what I'm setting up. Okay. Uh, number two, you could say, well, let's suppose that next year a professor didn't set this up for you, then it's sink or swim, and that's just that that's the reality of the situation. So, all right. So we got 22 over d plus s is equal to what's the height of the man? 6 over S. Yeah, cross multiply. 22S is equal to 6D plus 6S. is height divided by, so this small triangle. Okay, so if I subtract the 6s over, I have 16s is equal to 6d. What are we trying to solve for? We're, we're trying to find, it says, the first question says, how fast is the tip of the shadow moving away from the man? So we want to figure out this distance that the shadow the tip of the shadow is from the man so we want to find s prime so we're looking for s prime if i take a derivative of this will i get an s prime yes let's take the derivative with respect to t of 16s equals 6d What's the derivative of 16s? 16s prime. What's the derivative of 6d? 6d prime. Do you know the rate at which the man is walking away from the lamppost? It says that the man is walking away from the lamp post at a rate of three feet per second. So therefore, our rate as he's walking away is three. So I know D prime is equal to three, so I have 16 times S prime is equal to six times three, which is 18. Divide by 16, S prime is equal to nine over eight. What is my label? Feet per second, Chrissy. We don't know if the man. Oh. Yep. Yes. Um. Okay. So when I. Okay. So right here it says that the man is 15 feet away from the lamppost. 
if you wanted to substitute a 15 in right now. However, I, I will say this, you guys. I I maybe shouldn't should not have put that in there. Okay? Because I don't know if it works out in accordance with the rest of the problem. I believe the problem in your book probably doesn't set it up like that. They probably don't give you the exact distance that he's away at that current moment. So, Okay? So... For the last part. So the last question says, how fast is the tip of the shadow moving away from the lamp post? So think about this for a second, you guys. Have you been in an airport before? And you walk on those kind of escalators. And when let's say you're walk let's say the escalator is moving at ten miles per hour, and let's say that you're walking on it at three miles per hour. Okay? What is your speed relative to the escalator? Three, what's your speed relative to the uh, airplane that's sitting outside? 13. Okay, so let's think about this. The tip of the shadow is currently moving away at 9 over 8 feet per second from the man, but from the lamppost, it's also moving plus the speed of the man. So you would have to add on for that second part. D prime plus S prime is equal to... You know, 3 plus 9 eighths, well, that would be uh, 33 over 8. Yep, that's how fast he's moving from the post. The shadow is moving from the post. He's moving at a rate of whatever it was. Uh, we take D prime, which was three, and we add it to S prime, which was nine over eight. Because his shadow's moving away from him at a certain rate, but it's also moving from the pole at a certain rate. He's moving, the pole is not, so that makes a difference. Okay, last one. Uh, this is the problem that you guys had uh, on Friday, that you know you had a circle one, which I already talked about, but now you have the area of a triangle one. Okay, and uh, this is a this is a good example. Uh, area of a triangle is increasing at a rate of 4 inches squared per minute. And the altitude, what is the altitude? As the height of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 3 inches per minute. At what rate is the base increasing when the base is 10 inches and the area is 24 inches squared? What should I draw? Now what should I draw? Okay, I've got a height. What else should I draw? The base is 10. Write an expression for the area. Very good. Area of a triangle is equal to 1 over 2 times the base times the height. What am I trying to solve for? It says at what rate is the base. So I'm trying to solve for B prime. Now, if I take the derivative of that, I would have to use the product rule. Now, hold on. If I use the product rule, um, I'm looking for B prime. Do I know H prime? Says the altitude is increasing at a rate of three inches per minute. So I, I could use the product rule in that situation. Yeah, very good. So let's do it. Let's take the derivative with respect to time. We're going to use it. We're going to use it. No, because it's changing. It's changing, so we can't plug it in right away. I have to plug it in after the fact. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of one-half, I'm sorry, area equals base times height. What is the derivative of the area? A prime, which you said was 4. Okay, we'll plug that in. Now, if I'm going to use the product rule, I have two functions here. I have one that's in red, one that's in blue. What is the derivative of one-half B? Very good. 
one half b prime times h plus h prime one half b h prime. Good. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now we just fill in the blanks. What is a prime? Four. Do I know B prime? No, I'm trying to solve for that. Do I know the current height? Could I figure it out? What is the current area? 24 is equal to 1 half. What's the current base? 10 times the current height, which we're trying to figure out. So if you run in a situation where you can't figure it out, you got to go back in and figure out the, those existing conditions. So 24 is equal to 5h divide by 5, 24 over 5. Plus 1 half, do we know the current base? 10. Do we know the rate at which the height is changing? 3. So now it's a, this is a basic linear equation. I just solve this like you would any normal equation. 4 is equal to, looks like we're going to have 12 over 5. B prime. 24 divided by 2 is 12. What? Oh, you guys already did it? What's 15? You guys keep saying 15. Oh. <laughs> uh, 10 times 3 is 30 plus 1 at, or times 1 half 15. Very good. I thought you guys were saying 15 was like uh, up here. I thought you were saying 15. Okay. I subtract the 15 and I get negative 11 is equal to 12 over 5 B prime. Very good. Negative 55 over 12 is equal to B prime. So negative 55 over 12, what is my label? Inches per minute. What's interesting about that derivative? It's negative. Why is it negative? The area is increasing, right? But the height is increasing so quickly that in order to keep the area increasing at that rate, the, the base actually has to get smaller. So that's what's happening. Yeah, so the height is going up, but the base is coming together. Let me write down the problems that I would like you to work on. Let's, let's look and see what we had. 3.7, you guys had implicit differentiation. You knew how to do that, right? We, we're, we're doing it right in this lesson. 3.8, we had higher order, where you take the derivative more than once, right? You know how to do that. So then 3.9 is just related rates. That is what's going to be on the test, and we're done with Chapter 3. And we'll be able to move on to chapter four. Now, I will say, okay, I've given you guys some harder material, but we are a week behind where we were last year. So we have taken more time to do it as well, okay? So focus on that. We can test on Friday because this is the last stuff that we're covering. Tomorrow you have a full work day, but it would be better if you came to class tomorrow with your questions as opposed to starting the very first problem. Try to get a couple done ahead of time, okay? Then we could go from there. Test Friday. 